This morning's scripture is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1, 8 through 16, and then the book of Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Faith is reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was going to receive an inheritance. He went out without knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived in the land he had been promised as a stranger. He lived in tents along with Isaac and Jacob, who were co-heirs of the same promise. He was looking forward to a city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, even Sarah received the ability to have a child though she herself was barren and past the age for having children, because she believed that the one who promised was faithful. So descendants were born from one man, and he was as good as dead. They were as many as the number of the stars in the sky and as countless as the grains of sand on the seashore. All these people died in faith, without receiving promises, but they saw the promises from a distance and welcomed them. They confessed that they were strangers and immigrants on earth. People who say this kind of thing make it clear that they are looking for a homeland. If they had been thinking to return to it, but at this point in time, they are longing for a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God isn't ashamed to be called their God. He has prepared a city for them. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your land, your family, and your father's household for the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and will bless you. I will make your name respected, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, those who curse you, I will curse. All the families of the earth will be blessed because of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to thank uh, Bruce and Clarice for that great uh, offering of music. Uh, it's great uh, to hear those uh, uh, strong and powerful hymns uh, that uh, give us encouragement and strength. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Also, uh, today, uh, uh, 40 years ago, I was getting pretty nervous about this time because uh, uh, on this day, my wife and I now have been married for 40 years uh, today. So uh, Paula uh, took a chance on this fool here. But uh, anyway, uh, so uh, it's been a great journey and a great ride. And it's like, how did this time pass that fast? Uh, uh, it just seems like yesterday, but uh, anyway, it's a, it's a great day to celebrate and to remember and uh, to give God thanks uh, for the gift of, of families and uh, being together uh, today. So let us uh, begin with a word of prayer. Jesus, we just thank you uh, for the, the journey of life and the gift of life, the journey of faith. And we thank you for Abraham and Sarah and the the writer of Hebrews, as they uh, remind us of this journey that we walk with you. We pray that uh, you would speak to our hearts, uh, that you would remind us of the journey. And as we do that, uh, that you would help us deepen and, and uh, commit ourselves more fully to uh, taking the journey with you. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, this is probably a question that most everybody uh, can, can answer to. Uh, how many of you moved in your life? How many of you have moved in your life? Okay, uh, most everybody has had to do that. I think I got a picture of, uh, I don't know if we have a picture coming up here. Do we have that, Cheryl, or not? This is the house I grew up in. My dad still lives in it. I lived there for 18 years. And then from there, uh, I went to Dakota Wesleyan, so I lived in Mitchell, you know, every once in a while kind of coming back and then the summer times and stuff. And then uh, from there, I got married. And so we moved to Iowa Falls, Iowa, where I was a youth pastor. And then from there, uh, we were, uh, went, uh, came, uh, went to seminary and lived in Denver. 
Uh, after living in Denver, then we got appointed to Huron and Virgil United Methodist Churches. And then from there, we went to Canton, South Dakota. And then we went to uh, Rapid City. And now I'm back in Sioux Falls. It's kind of like life moves have a circled effect, doesn't it? Uh, it's kind of crazy that way. So, uh, uh, But anyway, I got to thinking about uh, moving because as we look at this uh, journey of uh, Abraham and Sarah, we, we know that, that God has asked them to move. Uh, normally, what people move for is either, you know, uh, jobs. Uh, if you read almost, uh, it's interesting, about 14% uh, percent of America moves every year. That's about 30 million people move in one way or another. And oftentimes, it's to move for a job or a job transfer. Uh, another reason is for retirement. You're moving to a retirement place. Uh, another reason is to move closer to family. You've moved away, and so now you're trying to get back closer to family. And, uh, and of course, uh, there are hosts of reasons for moving, but it's kind of a, a piece in our culture, in our lives, that people uh, move, as we all attest to. We've all had to move in one form or another fashion, and uh, it, it's somewhat quite unsettling, and yet um, there are also opportunities uh, for the future, as we see in that. We've been in this uh, series called Hall of Faith. Uh, we've been looking at Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, we, we looked at the faith of Abel, and we looked at Enoch as a man who walked with God. Uh, we last week uh, talked about Noah and also just his faith in uh, building the ark in the face of peer pressure. Uh, you know, uh, Taylor and I commented this week, we didn't know that when we preached on Noah that we'd end up getting six inches of rain, as I said earlier. So, you know, that was uh, a little careful. But, but today we're looking at, and, and really the heart of the, the author, the writer of Hebrews, has the most verses around Abraham and Sarah. Because they are the, the ones in the Bible who were asked to move by God. Now, when we uh, look in... Uh, in the, in the passage in Genesis, uh, literally, uh, uh, Abraham's family is in what we call present-day Iraq. It was Ur, uh, and that's the land that he was in. And uh, a, a call from God came to him that he should come over to present-day, what we would call Israel today. Uh, but anyway, the way to get there, it wasn't a straight line because you didn't go across the desert. You had to go there was a map you had to go up and around which is about 1100 miles now think about that for a moment moving 1100 miles uh just uh, your your belongings uh you know just your belongings your your fam just your small family it was just sarah and him and some other family and they they struck out and they they made that journey obviously it was a long period of time uh, to make it over to uh, shechem but i can imagine the conversation uh, between uh, uh, Abraham and Sarah when Abraham came in and said uh, uh, Sarah uh, I've had this uh, leading by God that uh, we need to move to uh, another land and uh, we need to move you know we, and it'll take us a long time to get there and you can imagine Sarah's going what are we doing and why are we going and what's the reason for going there well we have this promise of this new land that God is going to give us well do we know what this land looks like well, no, we don't. Uh, God didn't say anything about it. I just know that I'm supposed to go. And we can imagine the questions that are being raised by both Abraham and Sarah as to, well, what are we going to find there when we get there? Well, is it this wonderful land? Well, yeah, I think so, but nobody really knows. And yet, in faith, they took a risk. They took a risk and they made that journey and they get to Shechem, which is the northern part of Israel today. And when they get there, uh, they're kind of surprised that there are a bunch of other people there. Uh, and so when they get there, they're like, well, what, was this how this <laughs> this this supposed to be? But they begin to settle and uh, among the folks. And it's interesting to me that, that Abraham, the first thing that Abraham did, and Sarah as well, is respond to God's call on their life. A call that they didn't really know what was going to happen. Uh, there was, a, I would imagine, some uneasiness. But they made the move. They moved. They, they made the journey. They had to place their trust that God's promises 
because God promised them that they would be a blessing. They would be a great nation. And so they, they make this journey, they make this path, and they arrive there. Not sure what was going to happen. Now I know, you know, this week is, in the last couple of weeks, we've been probably embroiled in some uh, pieces in, in the news around, you know, and there's a lot of political stuff around the whole pieces around immigration and families and all those kinds of things, and I'm not getting into that, but I think this story helps us to think about that a little bit. What it must feel like to leave your homeland, the place you grew up, the thing you know, and just venture out in hope. Maybe somewhat led by God. Who knows? But that some way, somehow, that, that God surrounded and blessed Abraham and Sarah and cared for them in that journey. And, and that maybe, maybe some way that's, that's what God is doing in our world as well. To think about what does it mean to be a refugee, an immigrant, moving to a new place and, and how scary that must be and not sure what that's going to be like and, and even be in trouble. And it happened with Abraham. If we know Abraham's story, he gets to uh, Israel and then, then what happens is, you know, he knows these promises of God, but they come into a time of hunger, so they go down to Egypt. And on their way to Egypt, uh, Abraham says to his wife Sarah, well, Sarah, you're so beautiful. I know when I get to Egypt, they're going to kill me and take you. And so what I'm going to do is you're supposed to tell people you're my sister. And so they go to Egypt, and they're telling everybody that Sarah's a sister. And so then the Pharaoh takes Sarah in and gives, uh, gives uh, Abraham all this uh, wealth, of, uh, you know, kind of buying her. And, and pretty soon a plague comes on the whole Pharaoh's court. And finally, the truth comes out that really Sarah is his wife, and the, the Pharaoh is so upset, he just kicks him out of Egypt, but he leaves a lot wealthier than when he comes. How does that happen? How does that happen? You see, it's interesting that oftentimes Abraham and even Sarah later, they, they somewhat come to doubts about what God can do, and they try to take control themselves. And in essence, it kind of messes itself up, but then somehow God works it out for them because God has made this promise to journey and walk with them. In fact, it's interesting, I believe that faith through Abraham and Sarah helps us to see that God's call, call of God, even helps us to risk in the face of things that seem impossible. I mean, it just seems impossible because in their journey, they were promised they were going to have a child. Well, they don't have one for a long, long time. Even Sarah kind of tries to manipulate the situation, and that really doesn't work out so well until finally God comes and says, you will have a child. Now, Sarah laughs at this. She doesn't believe because she's at the age where she can't have a child, and lo and behold, they have Isaac. God's call on their lives seemed impossible. The journey that they took seemed impossible because they didn't know what it was going to be like. And yet, faith, as the author of Hebrews is telling us, faith is that trusting and believing in God's promises. That God will always walk with us. If we only are patient, if we only wait upon God, if we listen to God, not try to do things and take control of the things of our lives that are oftentimes out of our control, but to truly, literally trust God. And faith is one of those things that even when it seems impossible, God's gift in the journey is to walk with us. I was watching uh, James Corden is the late, late night guy on uh, CBS, and he does this thing where he drives in a car with usually some superstar singer, and they, they do karaoke in the car. And uh, this last week, he did one with Paul McCartney, one of the Beatles, and they were in Liverpool. And uh, it, was, it was fascinating. So they went to, to Paul McCartney's home, or his home where he grew up, and it was this small little apartment. I mean, it was his brother and him and his mom and dad. And so they go up and they knock on the door, and the lady that lives there lets them in. <laughs> I assume they arranged this before, but... You know, it's Paul McCartney, one of the Beatles. And so they go in, and he's, and it's fascinating. He describes what it was like growing up in his home, where this is the place where he wrote some of the songs, and this is where they practiced. And he said his dad played the piano over there, and, 
And, he, and, and in the middle of it, he stops and he says, you know, it seems impossible now that from this little place, I've traveled the world. I'm known all around the world. It, it would just seem impossible. And yet, it occurred. Abraham and Sarah are descript, described as people of faith that we are to emulate in our lives because they trusted God. Now, there were times where they doubted and they tried to do things on their own, but ultimately, even I, I think it came to the point of when Isaac was born that they literally then believed. They literally believed and trusted in God's promise. And in he essence, they then discovered that faith is, is a living pilgrimage with God. That faith is a living pilgrimage with God. It's a daily thing. It's a, it's, it's a moment to moment thing. It's not just, oh, well, we come on Sundays and we experience worship and that's it. No, faith is a, and God and a relationship with God is a, is a moment to moment, every time kind of thing. Everyday experience in life. And we know that we're tempted to try to kind of take control of our lives. And in many ways, we should bear witness to the power of God's love. But ultimately, faith is, is that sense of knowing God's call and promises in our lives. Faith is recognizing that call, even when it seems somewhat impossible. And that faith is that living pilgrimage, that living journey with God. And I think that's why the author of Hebrews really focused on Abraham and Sarah because they literally left their homeland not knowing what was going to happen, but they trusted. They trusted God. They trusted God. Around the 1900s, there was an American poet by the name of Edgar Guest and uh, many, as many experienced during that time, uh, children died of, of illnesses and they had a, he and his wife had a son that died. He writes in his journal uh, of an experience, you know, his neighbor across the street was the local druggist, and they didn't really talk much, um, but they knew each other, and they'd wave at each other, and on one occasion, after his child died, and he talks about how deeply pained he was in his life, he, um, he goes into the drugstore, and Mr. Patton, who was the drugstore owner, pulls him over aside and, and just kind of gently says, you know, I don't know what your heart's feeling. Uh, it's beyond my comprehension. But I want you to know that I'll do anything for you. You can count on me. In his journal later that day, he said, you know, I, this was a person I didn't really know that well. But the words, those words, are the words that transformed my life. You can count on me. He knew that there was a neighbor Somebody who said, I will be there for you. And there's something to be said about that. There's something about recognizing, for him, it renewed his faith. Edgar's faith in the sense that there, God did not leave him alone. That God offered to him a neighbor and reminded him of the words, you can count on me. I think Abraham and Sarah help us with that in our journeys of faith. As we have been looking at the the Hebrews chapter 11, we again have been focusing on how do we deepen our faith? What helps us to deepen our faith? Well, if we truly examine the story of Abraham and Sarah, we know that there are places where they doubted and they, they tried to take control of the situation and oftentimes it didn't go well, but then God somehow came in and rescued them and cared for them. And ultimately they noticed and remembered in their lives how much God had been with them, how those promises had come true. Even though it probably didn't go the way that they thought it was going to go, they still recognized in faith that God was walking with them in their journey of life. God calls to each one of us and calls us to maybe sometimes places where we might be uncomfortable in the journey of life. And yet God call, if we respond to that call, even when it seems impossible, we rely on the, placing our trust, our lives, all that we have. The power of faith is the power of knowing that God's promises are true. That's what we hold to as God's people, and may it be so. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit 
that continually journeys and walks with us and gives us sense in the power of faith and hope that you can only give. In all of our journeys of life, in our moves, in the places we have been, as we look back, we are again thankful for the many places where you have come and rescued us, where you have come and saved us. And we thank you for the witness of Abraham and Sarah, that as we look at their lives, may they help us in our own faith journeys, that we may truly seek your will and your way. Help us to offer ourselves and give ourselves in faith to you today. For we ask this in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen.